Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at another example of applying frequency and impedance scaling in the design of, um, of filters. I have uh, rewritten the design methodology. Again, we are starting with a normalized circuit where the gain and the cut of frequency are equal to 1. And then we're going to calculate the frequency and impedance scaling factors to know uh, what uh, scaling factor we need to apply to our circuit components in order to get the design specifications uh, that we want. So I have uh, an active first order low pass filter and the, uh, it consists of uh, what is essentially a practical integrator, but basically uh, a resistor R1 of value 1 ohm and then in the feedback path uh, a resistor in parallel with a capacitor. Notice all the components have a value of 1, except for this resistor that I've labeled R star. And R star is simply a compensation resistor. Uh, it does not play a role into setting either the gain or the frequency response of the circuit. It's simply there for uh, purposes of compensating the DC offset due to the input bias current. And so its value is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 because a compensation resistor needs to make the resistance on both input terminals match each other. Uh, but again, those types of components that are typically not needed for either the frequency response or the gain of the circuit, uh, they're typically marked with the stars. They're um, non-essential non resistors, basically. So let's go ahead and get started. The cutoff frequency of this circuit, omega c, um, it's going to be equal to 1 over R2 times C. So basically for the first order low pass filter, as we have seen in a prior video, uh, the cutoff frequency is determined by both the feedback resistor and the capacitor. If we wanted to write in terms of uh, in hertz, it will be 1 over 2 pi R2 times C. And uh, the gain of the circuit, uh, we can call it A, it's going to be equal to negative R2 over R1. So R2 and C set the frequency response of the circuit or the, the cut of frequency. R2 and R1 set the uh, gain of the circuit. Um, let's imagine that our design specifications are such that we want a, um, a magnitude of gain equal to 5 and sometimes the gain uh, is referred to as K because that's the scaling factor but since I've written it as A before, I'm just going to keep that notation. So let's imagine I want my A equals to uh, 5 in magnitude. My cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz um, and again I don't have to be given anything else but sometimes I may just be told I have this value of capacitor available or I may just choose it myself. So let's imagine that I want to use a final capacitor value C prime of uh, 0 0.01 microfarads. So these are my design specs and I'm going to apply the methodology. Number one, as always, I'm going to find the value of my frequency scaling factor, K sub F. And K sub F, once again, is going to be equal to the ratio of omega prime to omega. Omega prime is um, 2 pi times the 1 kilohertz that I want to set my frequency to. Omega is just 1 radian per second. It's the frequency of the normalized circuit. And uh, this gives me 6,283.185 again. Step number two is I'm going to um, find the value of my impedance scaling factor Kr for my desired value of uh, capacitance, final capacitance. So I have that my uh, C prime is going to be equal to 1 over Kf Kr times C and therefore my Kr is going to be C divided by Kf times C prime or uh, 1 farad divided by Kf I just calculated to be 6,283.185 and my capacitor is just equal to, um, excuse me, my C prime. I want it to be 0 0.01 microfarads. 
So that gives me a um, impedance scaling factor equal to 15,915.5. So finally, I can go ahead and scale my resistors. And so I have that my R prime is going to be equal to KR times R. or uh, 15,915.5 times 1, or basically 15.9 kilohertz, kilo ohms, excuse me. And this will be the value of both my resistors if I wanted my gain to be equal to 1. But since um, I have a gain of 5 that I want in absolute terms, I need to go an extra step to set my gain and the setting of my gain implies that if a is equal to 5 that means that r2 over r1 must be equal to 5. Now which resistor do I modify? Well notice that r2 is the one that is playing a role in setting the frequency response so that's the one that I want to leave uh, in place as 15.9 kilo ohms. However r1 I will need to modify to set my gain so that means that R1 will be equal to R2 divided by 5, which is 15.9K divided by 5, which is 3.18 kilo ohms. And again, I've, I can consider this my, my gain setting resistor. Whereas um, R2, I'm considering it my, my kind of frequency setting resistor. Um, and that's it. My step number four will be to verify. I'm going to go ahead and write the values already in the original circuit. So my R1 prime will be 3.18 kilo ohms. My R2 prime will be 15.9 kilo ohms. My C prime will be 0 0.01 microfarads. Obviously, my R star prime is just going to be equal to um, R1 prime in parallel with R2 prime. Um, and I can go ahead and run the verification. So basically, check my results by computing both the gain and the uh, cut of frequency of the new circuits, my gain is going to be equal to, in absolute value, R2 over R1, which by design is going to be 5. This is 15.9k divided by 3.18k, which is equal to 5. And that's easy to see the circuit because, again, it is simple. But in more complex circuits, um, things may not be as simple to visualize. And then my cutoff frequency, Fc, is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi R2 prime times C prime. And this is Fc prime. I guess I should have added primes everywhere. So 1 divided by 2 pi 15.9k times 0 0.01 micro and this is approximately equal to 1 kilohertz so everything checks and my circuit has been designed so by now we should uh, be fairly familiar with how to apply frequency and impedance scaling in order to uh, design active filters and passive filters uh, for different values of cutoff frequencies and gains thank you